Hello, it's James from Technical Topics. Uh, this afternoon, I'm doing a quick video on cranking compression test uh, using Pico. So we've got uh, Pico scope here. You just about to see it. Uh, we've got a, an overhead valve engine, and we're using two main uh, input types. We have a current clamp around the starter motor, and we are using a a Ditex pressure transducer in the exhaust pipe. And the idea is to show a quick video of uh, how easy it can be to get to engine condition test. So we've got the Pico set there on the um, screen. Uh, I've got it set on two channels. So one channel is cranking out, second channel is the pressure pulse, and we've set up something called a single trigger. So the single trigger allows an event to happen, and then the scope will record the beginning of the event uh, all the way through to the end. Uh, so we'll do a quick capture, we'll see what we get up on the screen, and then we'll have a short discussion about what's what. To crank this engine over, I've got a uh, super duper start stop switch. So what I'm going to do is press that, we'll let the engine crank for five seconds, and then we'll come to the screen and have a quick look and review. So here we go. And then we stop. And when it gets to the end of the screen, it should hopefully have recorded um, that cranking effort. So now for the analysis. So what we can see are, are um, the red lines here are the pressure pulse sensor and the blue lines are the cranking amps. So we can look at one or other in combination. Uh, cranking amps on its own is a brilliant first test. Um, if, we, if we just pull the pressure pulses out of the way, if I come in here and have a little zoom, the cranking compression waveform is taken from the starter motor current and the current changes in the starter motor as the engine is rotated up towards TDC. So the more uh, compression that we have, the higher the current and we can see these peaks going from low to high and then back to low and each cylinder TDC in uh, compression gives me a, a peak of the line. There's several things that we can do very, very quickly and easily. We can pull a cursor line measure the relative heights and then we're looking for a relationship between the peaks so uh, they all look pretty deep and crisp and even um, there's no high no no low there is a rule of thumb which we can use we take the cranking amps of the start of the battery um, so the amp hour rate of the battery we multiply that by three and that gives me a ballpark figure for what should be an acceptable cranking uh, value 45 amp hour battery we got on the screen there 160 on the peak the average will be about 150 so in terms of is the compression in the ballpark of what we expect then yes it is uh, second thing we can do so we don't have one low obviously if we had a compression out the peaks in sequence one of them or two of them or three of them would be low or four uh, there are some other things to watch for which go beyond the scope of what we're trying to cover today but um, for instance odd peaks not necessarily low but also high can indicate um, internal malfunctions now the the really good thing about this test method is it takes as you've seen uh, one clamp to go around the battery cable a uh, five or ten second crank and a little bit of um, analysis work to tell whether or not you've got fundamentally an engine problem so imagine that in the context of a diesel engine where you'd have to pull glow plugs uh, we don't have to do that or petrol engine where stripping the engine down on a car that's marginally you know valuable in terms of the repair whether it's you know worth doing or not we can still leave the car if it was misfiring we can give it back to the customer in exactly that condition now that's the initial inspection if we come out with my zoom now on the pico if we get rid of the zoom and then drag down my pressure pulses this is where we start to fill in the gaps so essentially we could think of our cranking amps as the headline do we have a major malfunction yes or no and then we can look at the pressure pulses as the detail if we have a problem where is that problem um, evident so the pressure transducer that we have currently in the exhaust pipe can be fitted in three locations location number one it can be in the exhaust pipe Location number two, it can be in the intake manifold. Location number three, it can be in the dipstick tube. And these will give you triangulation for your gas leakage, if you like. So a lack of compression shown by the current clamp can be because it's leaking out the exhaust valve, it's leaking back the intake valve, or it's going past the rings into the crankcase. If you don't have any of those conditions present, um, the other option, so the fourth option for why we have a, a low cranking amps waveform is that the compression isn't being generated because something's bent. And so really we flush out uh, the three options of um, gases leaking. And if no gases are leaking, then we're down to a lack of compression. 
uh, other factors that can cause compression issues but they're more global than single cylinder are things like blocked or restricted intakes and exhaust pipes which are affecting the engine's ability to be an air pump so lots going on Anyway, enough about that. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to zoom in now and pick up on four pulses. Why four pulses? Well, we've got four cylinders in our engine, so if we pick up four pulses, we should get a bit of a look around uh, four cylinders. Uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of tweaking here, so I'm going to go down to the magnification, zoom on in, and I'm going to increase the amplitude of my cranking amps to give me a rough idea uh, and a sort of exaggerated idea of what's going on. I'm going to pull my pressure pulses out of the way and I'm just going to tweak the waveform ever such so slightly so we're having a slightly different view on the amplitude of the pressure pulses. So um, <laughs> it's been thought of as the pressure pulses are akin to reading tea leaves. Uh, so with the mystery people that shake the teacup and say that your Auntie Millie's going to die in six months being run over by a dog, okay, this type of thing has been reflected to reading the pulses. On the very base level, so with the current clamp and the pressure transducer in the exhaust pipe, what we're looking for is parity or Sesame Street diagnosis. Sesame Street, when they're teaching kids about fruit, they have three apples and an orange and they sing this song that one of these things doesn't look like the other. One of these things just ain't the same. And this is what we're looking for on our pressure pulses. We're looking for deep and crisp and even and uh, repeated patterns of chi and good. When we have a deviation, we see low in the current and then we see a fluctuation in the pressure and we can start to get some level of correlation. Okay, that's it, quick summary. Um, some idea of what's going on. We deal with this subject in uh, great depth and detail in our oscilloscope masterclass and oscilloscope courses on our boot camp and another scope related training. So if you want to learn more, um, give us a shout. We've got the website there in the background. Pop on there and have a quick look. You'll see uh, training courses are plenty. Come on down and experience hands on the depth and detail that you can get very quickly and easily. Thanks for watching. See you soon.